All right, running late this week. It's Thursday. Yeah, we're getting it out. It's, we're here, though. We're here. So we're going to jump right in because uh, we know we're already late. So uh, let's get this out, and you guys can enjoy it. We're not. <laughs> we're going to do Luke 6, All right. verses 20 to 31. Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, and if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. So this um, this comes from um, the Gospel of Luke. Yep. And um, as I mentioned in my sermon, as every seminarian like me and John is well taught, uh, there's a difference between Matthew's version of this, which comes from the Sermon on the Mount, because yep. all great things in Jewish world happen on mountains, um, and Matthew's written to Jewish Christians. Um, and Luke, which has a social justice bent, doesn't care about mountains, Jesus comes down the mountain to be right on the same level as the people and talks to them about not their spiritualized needs, not being poor in spirit, right? you know, but um, being poor and being hungry, not who hunger and thirst for righteousness, as Matthew, but you who are hungry. Right. Um, so, I, you know, that, that, that really kind of informed my sermon for Sunday. And, and I think what I tried to do, John was I tried to talk about people who have very real hurts. And it was All Saints Sunday as well. Yeah. So, but people who have really very real hurts and um, and where God is within that. And, and in particular, where we can be as the church. Um, and as I said in my sermon, I think we are church best when we are in the middle of those hurts being Christ for one another. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think I think that, that was what I tried to do with that. Um, so that's why you get in the get in this kind of notion that even though people are mourning and sad, they're surrounded and shown love in that they're blessed to be in that place. Not blessed to have lost somebody but blessed to be in that place where people can show them love and show them grace and mercy and everything. And, and I think that's why we can look at these uh, Beatitudes and, and kind of say, well, how is it that you're blessed if you're poor or hungry? It's because Christ is in us. Yeah. You know? And I wonder, too, because you've got in this, in Luke's section, specifically to the woes that aren't in Matthew's gospel. And, you know, as, as you were preaching this on Sunday, I was thinking about, because you talked about, you know, the blessing of being mm -hmm. Christ to one another. And it's very clearly, you know, for the people who are on the quote unquote receiving end of, of Luke's versions, what their blessing is. And they're the people who have not it's that great reversal Luke really preaches about. But I was also sitting there thinking, for the people who hear this, these woes, and it's a pretty marked shift for Jesus. Jesus isn't usually this candid. But I also wondered, too, if there's the blessing in that of all those things that prevent us from being Christ to other people. Mm -hmm they get that too, where it's not it's not just good news for some, bad news for some. It's good news objectively. 
-hmm. we might perceive it subjectively as bad news of, you know, all right, this woe is going to hit me. But the blessing that comes out of that is someone gets to be Christ to me. Mm -hmm. I get to understand the experience of what that's like because all of these things have prevented me from experiencing it. And, you know, like real life example of this, John, is like right now where food prices are so high and there's more and more people, right, that our folks are seeing right. that we're feeding and trying to take care of because they just can't afford to buy as much for their family anymore. And, and like, if you're a person that's just kind of riding through going, oh, well, thank God we got enough money. You're kind of throwing out there, thank God and everything, but you don't have the real experience of being physically, tangibly shown grace and mercy in love in a situation where no one has to help you. Right. But they do. And I was over in our grocery club yesterday yeah. and just kind of watching folks come through and the joy on the face of the person receiving as they get to walk through and kind of shop for things. Yeah. And they're they're talking with our volunteers and oh well, my kids really like this and and that's really good. Oh, you know kids, they don't like this over there. And, right. And there's a joy of sharing that experience versus, oh, thank God, thank God we got money. Just keep on pressing through. Yeah. It's a whole different thing, right? That's what you're talking about. Right. And, you know, I think another example is, you know, like when, when Quinn came into our family system, the church didn't have to make us meals. You know, we between the two of us, we would have figured out how to how to make it work. Yeah. But you know, after having been isolated, not being around people, you know, the people who made us meals, one of the best parts of our day was when that knock came at our door and we got to interact with somebody. And, you know, we got to be proud parents and show off Quinn and people could be excited for us. You had plenty of money to buy your own food. Right. You could have figured out making your own food. Exactly. But somebody was, somebody did church to us. Yeah. And that was all the difference. It wasn't, yeah. you know, you didn't have to. But you really experienced that that blessing. Yeah. I was sharing with John off camera that um, earlier this week, one of my... John knows this, and he knows it's one of these weird things about me. One of my guilty pleasures in life is that I am a Dua Lipa fan. <laughs> if you don't know who Dua Lipa is, Google her. Great singer. Good, great singer. Um, she did an interview, I don't know, a few months ago with, uh, with Stephen Colbert that I was watching earlier this week. And, um, and it was funny because Colbert was interviewing her. But then she was talking about how she's gotten into starting to interview people as well. And he says, well, why don't you interview me? And so they flip roles. And so she asks him this question about his comedy and his faith, because Stephen, of course, is a devout Catholic, yeah. and how they inform each other, his comedy and his faith, or how sometimes one wins out over another. And he had this whole thing on talking about how his, the symbol of death is not a symbol of defeat in our faith. Yeah. And go watch it. Just Google Stephen Colbert, Dua Lipa on YouTube. Just search it there. It'll come right up. And um, it was fascinating because we had just had this, John. Blessed are the poor. Yeah. We don't see death in death blessing. Right. Whereas that's the that's the flip side of the cross coin, right? Right, right. It's no different with this. You're poor, there's a flip side to it. That you are blessed. Yeah. And for the reasons you've talked about and when I think to the you know, when Jesus says, you know, when all these things happen to you, rejoice, for your reward is great in heaven. Where He doesn't mean thank God they're happening to you. Right. But it's it's an opportunity to see the assurance of what has been promised. Yeah. It's not necessarily 
you know a blessing in the moment it's not necessarily good news when you know your tire is flat or you know you're feeling filled with dread and woe but it's another one of those instances where where we're turned to God who promises to uplift us in all the ways that he does but also uplift us by the community he gathers around us and it's and it's no different than like you know like when my son John got hit in the face with a baseball and his mom is sitting with him in the hospital we're not sitting there saying thank God he got hit in the face with a baseball this was years ago but in that moment she is right by his side holding on to him yeah and in that there is love and blessing and care and and there's something in our faith i think john i don't know how to say it other than very inartfully there is something in our faith about um even in those bad times being able to see love and life and that's that's like looking at the cross and saying yeah. that's the symbol of our faith why is a symbol of death a symbol of our yeah. faith because we know that that's what we experience in life but it's not the end of the story yeah paul has that that great line about the wisdom of the cross is foolishness fun. Yeah. yeah and it's where else but here would you would you find right. blessing and love right and compassion amidst the darkness of life. Yeah. But that's just the way it often yeah. works with God. God God does the last thing we would possibly think or show up in the last place we would possibly conceive. I guess John that's true because just the world I mean pe- people love to say life is good and you know life is wonderful and everything and it is. There's a lot of blessing life is really hard too yeah life is hard as well and i think that in so many ways our scripture writers know that and they're trying constantly to reorient our to almost rewire our brains to be able to say yes yes there's a lot of difficulty in life and in the end of life no matter what you know it's like uh hank williams said no matter how i struggle and strive I'll never get out of this world alive. Yeah. Yes, we will. But you've got to rewire your brains and see it through the lens of faith, right? Yep. So. So. You want to pray, Sal? Sure. Gracious God, as created beings, we feel the blessings and the woes that human life brings. There are incredible highs and there are valleys where we feel the shadow of death but Lord in spite of all of that roller coaster we experience what is always with us is your never failing presence that you truly are with us you walk with us you reveal your glory your love and your mercy in ways that we cannot understand but yet it's always there you are always there help us to hold firm to that today and whatever is befalling us the joyous and the sorrowful help us to hold firm to you because you hold firm to us you've taken hold of us forever and always in the cross of your son pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Have a great Thursday. See you on Sunday.